Hey everyone, I know a lot of you guys comment on my videos and I also know I haven't been responding to all of them. Okay, I really try my best to respond but I can only do what I can. Anyway, I was going through my comment section and I realized there's a lot of people with similar types of questions and comments. So in this video, I'll be picking 40 comments, some of them random, some of them common questions and try my best to respond to them. Make sure to stay till the very end to see if I responded to your comment and if not, then feel free to drop your comment down below. I thought this way would be more fun for me and more beneficial for people who are thinking of similar questions and comments. Anyway, without further ado, let's dive right into the comment section. So the first question is asking, how can I communicate with you directly? Okay, so there are three ways to get in contact with me. First is through the comment section. So whenever I post a new video, drop a comment down below and you'll have a good chance of getting a reply from me. Second is from my Twitter or X account, which you can find it on my channel profile or just search Tech with Jono. I've only just started this account like half a year ago, so I'll try to be more active over there. And also I just realized that I didn't have message requests enabled. So if you have been messaging me over there, apologies for that. The third way is through my email here, but that's mostly for business contacts. Okay, this person said, I'm a high school student with no experience in technology, but I'm very interested in the IT industry. What should I study so I can expand my views? You're still in high school. You have plenty of time to get your experience up. You should watch YouTube videos on what the IT industry is about, especially the ones that show you the proper day in life videos so you can really decide if that's what you want. This comment says, thanks for the video. Thoughts on Google certification courses. Personally, I haven't done Google certifications. If you're going for an entry-level role, then it doesn't really matter much whether you're taking CompTIA, Google, or Microsoft. The content you get are generally the same. But CompTIA has a long track record and it's pretty well recognized as the industry standard. So from an interviewer's perspective, that might give you a slight advantage. All right, this comment says, easy if you're a DEI. DEI, for those that don't know, means diversity, equity, and inclusion. And come on, getting hired based on DEI over your skills and knowledge and qualifications, that's a recipe for failure. This person said, as an ITE student, I can only see four opportunities to work in the future. Machine learning, AI engineering, data science, and cybersecurity. And I think cybersecurity is the easiest one. This is a fun one. I've actually studied in all of these topics in my degree, except for cybersecurity. And in terms of technical knowledge, you're mostly right about that. But the responsibility and accountability is a lot worse than all of them. You're literally in charge of the entire company's protection. So your mistakes basically carry more weight than other departments. This person said, I have a little kid and I work a full-time job. You convinced me on trying cybersecurity due to certification. I can't afford full college and my time is limited at times. However, I always like networking and learning, so I'm going to go for this at a reasonable pace. While others say, yes, a degree is a must for advancement, not every one of us is looking for boss level. I just need my foot in the door. I completely agree with you. Tech degrees are there to make profit of you. If you just want to get your foot in the door with the least amount of cost, then just go with certifications. This comment says, can I get into cybersecurity without any certification or with cheap certification because I can't afford certification? I would love to say yes because I believe in people who are self-taught. I also like to learn things on my own, but the majority of employers are traditional. So that means they need to see some form of an educational track record to prove that you're not just lying your way in. This person said, I might have a stupid question, but can someone explain why did he or rather the company use CrowdStrike instead of using Splunk. So this comment is from my day in life video where I was showing how I use a popular endpoint detection and response solution called CrowdStrike. Splunk is just basically a seam solution, which means the sole purpose is to ingest logs and make sense out of them. When we do need to take actions like isolating an endpoint, we still need to go on CrowdStrike and perform the actual action over there. This person said, I do general IT studies. I have to say security is one of the easiest things I had, but I only got to learn how to use Nmap and BSA Security Onion and how to detect fake emails and videos. I want to maybe get specialized into security. I don't know if it's just a small fraction of what you need to know to be a professional security analyst or that is a good basic. Can someone tell me what kind of level my security knowledge is? Okay, using Nmap, detecting fake emails, videos are all great, but they're very basic stuff. You're right to say it's just a small fraction of what we do. There are many responsibilities involved such as detections, investigations, remediations, documentations. There's also the vulnerability side, so stuff like threat hunting and resolving CVEs, 
Cybersecurity is a huge field, so a security analyst in one company might have different responsibilities than another one. This person said, I need hands-on training from you if you provide. I am ready to pay. I am looking for quick practical training to crack the interview. I'm actually working towards a practical training course since 90% of you guys said you're interested in it. So make sure to subscribe with notifications on. Also feel free to follow on X as well. I'll be doing announcements over there, so stay tuned. This comment said, if I get a CS degree, could I land a SOC analyst with no experience? And if not, what jobs could I get with that degree? I actually did a CS degree and the best thing about this is a lot of tech jobs prefer someone with a computer science background. I landed my SOC analyst role with no cybersecurity knowledge or experience so that's definitely possible for you. And if cybersecurity is not for you, then you can pretty much just widen your opportunities in every single field in the tech industry like machine learning and AI, they're both pretty trendy right now. This person said, when you don't have a clickbait, it was why is this certain thing hard? Bro, you think that's clickbait? You're lucky you didn't see this masterpiece. This person said, I'm in interior design industry, do you recommend learning Python? Just curious. If you mean learning Python for interior design, then no, because they're not really related to your industry. But if you're aiming to get into the tech industry, then yes, 100%. This person said, what job have you done, uncle? Hey man, I'm in my 20s. But to answer your question, my first professional job was software engineer for a year before I joined the cybersecurity team as a security analyst. This comment says, I'm considering making the move to cybersecurity, but my main concern at this point is my work-life balance. Do you find yourself doing a lot of additional work and research after your typical 9 to 5? With cyber threats constantly changing and evolving, it seems there will be a never-ending amount of research you will need to do outside your typical workday. I appreciate any feedback on this issue from anyone who is currently in these roles. This is a really good question, and I'm going to answer it with my current work experience. I mainly work from home, so my work-life balance is definitely better than spending two hours a day going in and out the office. As for the typical 9 to 5, I think my experience so far has been mostly 9 to 5. On some occasions, it would be less because there's less work, so that gives me some flexibility to just drop in and out of work. Other days, I would be needed to work extra hours for incident response or deploying a new feature. As for researching, I wouldn't say it's never-ending because it really depends on what you're researching. For example, if we're only using a particular tech stack, then we would just mostly focus on vulnerabilities on those tech stack. It would obviously burn us out if we're constantly researching on everything. This person said, I was looking for a little motivation to get back into studying and I love how you mentioned actionable tips on how to do that. I think an hour of our personal time is completely reasonable. Thanks for the constructive feedback. I really try my best to provide actionable tips for my videos because I remember when I was in your position as a new starter and the feeling of being lost and having no direction. So thanks for that. <laughs> this person said, man, you're a master. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Unfortunately, I have to first complete the university before I jump into that role, despite my wide experience in physical security and my current knowledge in IT. Anyway, I find this content very useful and hoping that my age wasn't another obstacle for my purpose. I'm pretty sure by the next four years, I'll be prepared for it. By then, I'll be 40 years old. I hope to get there. I'm proud of you for not giving up even at that age. You'll be the type of person that's gonna set an example for the rest of us that age is really not the limitation. Kudos to you. This person said, from this video, I think cybersecurity is so hard and kind of boring. Just check email and that stuff is so boring. Well, every job is boring if you have no passion or interest in it. It really depends on your perspective. So it sounds like this job is not for you. This person said, don't waste your time. He has computer science degree, clickbait, there goes his credibility. Okay, we need to set this straight. I studied computer science, majored in data science. There is literally no overlap, no cybersecurity content during my entire study. Comments like this really make me scratch my head. But hey, thanks for the engagement. This comment says, as a cybersecurity student, this video is beyond valuable. I actually downloaded this video and I'll be rewatching it. By the way, I know documentation process might be boring. However, it would be very useful to see how you approach that as well. Thanks for the kind feedback. I'm not exactly sure what kind of documentation process you wanna see, cause it's just putting everything that has happened in the incident on paper. Not sure if that's long enough for a YouTube video, but hey, if that's enough comments about it, then I'll do it. This comment says, one of the dumbest things someone can do with their career is plan ahead. Like a database admin dreaming of becoming a cybersecurity professional when he has a way better chance of actually becoming a systems architect for which he has experience. Why can't he let embedded programmer take up cybersecurity instead, for example? I'm actually stunned by this comment. 
one of the dumbest things someone can do with their career is plan ahead. Buddy, when you lead with that sentence, you've already set the tone with how dumb that sounds. Why can't someone dream about another job? If we don't have dreams and aspirations, what's the point of living? I have a better chance of being reckless and spending all my money, going broke and homeless. But hey, why should I work hard and get rich when another billionaire can do it instead? This person said, should I do bachelor's in computer science and then do master's in cybersecurity? I'm not sure how your university offers computer science, but sometimes they do dual degrees or computer majors, so maybe that's a better option. I don't really see a point in doing masters unless you're going for a very specific job that requires it. Okay, these comments are actually pretty interesting. This guy said, not gonna lie, this video helped me realize cybersecurity is not for me. I can finally get that thought out of my head and maybe look towards front-end dev. Good luck on your journey, guys. And this other guy said, try it out first. Front-end dev has a high chance of getting automated away in the next 5-10 to 10 years, or at least the salary will decrease because of that. Ha, <laughs> that aged well. ChatGPT has been trying to chip away software engineering for some time now. Now, in my honest opinion, I think software engineering and cybersecurity will never be automated or replaced by AI. Simply for this one reason. Someone needs to fix the broken code that AI produces. And also, AI lacks a lot of contextual knowledge, especially in cybersecurity. So, in the end, it will always need human input. As for front-end development though, yeah, that's already been automated away as web development is generally not as complex. Okay, this person says, this may be old, but I do need a little guidance. I'm from help desk and I've been in it for five years so far. I want to move to security probably due to not liking to answer phones. I have no experience, not even security plus. Where would you perhaps start? I think you answered your own question there. Start with security plus and see how you go. This guy says, try to wear a mustache. Bro, I'm running the Asian jeans, man. I'm struggling here. This comment says, I'm currently going to cybersecurity for college and was wondering if you know what laptops would you recommend getting. Okay, a common myth for getting into cybersecurity is you need a beefy laptop to run all the programs and software on your computer. Realistically, any laptop will work fine. Almost everything is on cloud nowadays, but I do have a MacBook Air and I've been using this for a very long time, so there's that. This comment says, would knowing CPP instead of SQL or Python be fine? I assume CPP means C++. I always highly recommend learning Python and SQL as they're beginner friendly. Python is mostly used for automations, so you can never go wrong with that. SQL uses a pretty common syntax, so you'll find this knowledge transferable throughout your career. Personally, from a blue team's perspective, I use Python whenever there's automation involved and whenever I need to do same work like on Splunk. They use SPL, which stands for Search Processing Language, which is quite similar to SQL. This guy says, job market is broken, bro. I think it really depends on the type of companies you're applying, the location, the skill level, and other things. Oftentimes, I hear people say they can't land a job, but they've been telling me they've only been applying to fan companies or the top tech companies. If you're just putting your foot in the door, try to apply to some small companies or even small startups. You get a lower pay, but hey, experience is more important. This person says, should I become software engineer or learn cybersecurity? This really depends on your interest. From a career perspective, software engineer is more technical, so it's harder. But if you go into cybersecurity development with software engineer experience, then the skills are transferable. If it's vice versa, then it'll be harder for you to tackle software engineer with cybersecurity as your base. So I would probably say go software engineer, and if you don't like it, then rotate into cybersecurity. But for both pathways, you definitely need passion and interest or you'll find it boring and burn out. This guy says an ad for Splunk. Man, I wish it was an ad. I ain't getting a single cent from Splunk. But seriously, I only showcase Splunk because it's one of the most popular themes out there and it's literally what we use. But yeah, thanks for the comment. This person says, cybersecurity or data science, which one is best? Comment and let me know your opinion. I would say cybersecurity is simply for one reason, job security. In a recession, companies will always cut jobs, but no one will cut jobs in cybersecurity because they're fundamental to a company to exist. This person says, this thought just occurred to me, but I can't be the first person who has pointed it out. Part of cybersecurity is the security of hardware. If so many cybersecurity professionals are working from home with their computer right in their home office, couldn't that be a security vulnerability? This is another good question. Yes, there's definitely risk involved with working from home, but you'll be given a company laptop which has all the softwares and monitoring systems already in place. So if anything suspicious happens within that laptop, the security operations team will be notified. 
and you won't be able to make any changes to the laptop because you need admin permissions. Fun fact, the easiest way for hackers to infiltrate the company is not through hardware or software, but by social engineering through people. That's why it's very important for everyone to stay vigilant of potential phishing attempts. This person says, how did you automate that PDF work? It isn't part of cybersecurity skills. Please respond, did you use Terraform? So this is part of security engineer type of work, which involves building tools for analysts. We have our own automation platform on Splunk, which allows us to build a low code solution using apps or REST APIs, all to reduce manual work. So this other comment says, do SOC analysts need to know how to code? What a nice follow up question. Generally, no. The main responsibilities for a SOC analyst is to analyze, but I always advocate coding for SOC analysts because it takes your level of understanding to the next level. This means you really understand how the tools are built, so if you need to make any changes, you don't have to wait for someone else to do it. And it's never a bad thing to learn how to code. This person says, don't listen to negative Nancy's on how hard it is. I don't think you even watched the video, but if you did, then you would know exactly why I say cybersecurity is hard. Whenever it comes to hate comments, there's always no reasoning, just face level comment. This person says, if I understood you correctly, you use some programs to run automated systems to detect and check data. If these programs are known to hackers, they become a liability because the hackers will know exactly what you will be told by those programs and what you will look for. I'm not sure about relying on automation in general, let alone dealing with attacks. It's a good point. If hackers know what programs we use, that doesn't mean they know how we use the programs and also how it works internally. On top of that, we have multiple layers of security policies to protect ourselves. For example, if a hacker knows we use AWS, when they try to hack, they have to reach our firewall first. And if we have security policy on our firewall to deny unknown traffic, then they just get blocked. For automations, well, automations are fundamental, or else you need to hire a thousand times more people just to look through all the logs. Automations are there to catch like 90% of the bad activities, the rest is alerted to the security team for manual investigations. This person says, I don't think any newbie is going to have what it takes. All the tech layoffs are just putting people with technical experience back into the market. All they need to do is get familiar with some cybersecurity tools and they'll have years of experience employers are requiring. We could think of it from another perspective. If a role in cybersecurity only requires basic experience, would it be more economical to hire newbies with those exact experience? or senior people with more technical experience who's going to demand more pay. It will most likely be the former. It really depends on the companies and what kind of positions they're hiring, but everyone has a shot if they put in the effort. This guy says, never believed it. This is much harder than coding. Fighting bad guys in Russia who have nothing to do but hack. People in China and North Korea who have plenty of time. It is much easier to code with bugs than to move into cybersecurity. As time moves on, the things you are supposed to know are too wide. I think this is a pretty common misconception about cybersecurity. You're not literally out there fighting the bad guys in Russia. Firewalls exist. You can put in security policies and automations, which is going to block like 99% of the bad actors. But yes, the responsibilities and liabilities are much higher in cybersecurity than coding. Anyway, that's it from me. Hope my answers have been helpful for the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.